or smaller you hope you are fine welcome back to my channel drawing damage story if you are new in my channel i will introduce myself and my channel with you i am Sonia Harvey and in my channel i select an object or a theme to draw and for drawing i will make the story or deliver some information or simply we talk with each other related to the topic so it was my second acrylic painting attempt and it was a uh, blue water lily. I love water lily and they are so amazing especially the blue ones. They are just mesmerizing in appearance. So at the same time while I paint the scenario I will narrate you the second part of the story that is uh, the name of the story is the water lily and the gold spinners and it was taken from Andrew Lang's fairy books Estonia. So let's jump to the second part of the story. In the first part of the story it was ended uh, it's like the prince lost his wife and he was in so much grief and the prince's father asked him to uh, take another bride but the prince was stubborn and said that he would never love another. So here goes the second part. A year afterward he came suddenly upon the base where his beloved met her death. As he recalled the misfortune he wept bitterly and would have given all he possessed to have her once more alive. In the midst of his grief, he thought he heard a voice singing, and he looked around, but could not see no one. Then he heard the voice again, and it said, Alas, be wished and all forsaken. This I must lie forever here. My beloved, no thought has taken to free his bride that was so dear. He was greatly astonished. He sprang from his house and looked everywhere to see if no one were hidden under the bridge, but no one was there. Then he noticed a yellow water lily floating on the surface of the water, half hidden by its broad leaves. But flowers don't sing, and in great surprise he waited, hoping to hear more. Then again the voice sang, Alas, be wished and all forsaken, tis I must lie forever here. My beloved, no thought has taken to free his bride that was so dear. The prince suddenly remembered the gold spinners and said to himself, If I write to the who knows but that they could explain this to me, he at once wrote to the heart and found the two maidens at the fountain. He told them what had befallen their sister the year before, and how he had twice heard a strange song, but yet could say no singer. They said that the yellow water lily could be none other than their sister, who was not dead, but transformed by the magic ball. Before he went to bed, the eldest made a cake of magic herbs, which she gave him to eat. In the night, he dreamed that he was living in the forest and could understand all that the birds said to each other. Next morning, he told this to the maidens, and they said that the charmed cake had caused it, and advised him to listen well to the birds and see how they could tell him. And when he had recovered his bride, they begged him to return and deliver them from their rest bondage. Having promised this, he joyfully returned home. And as he was riding through the forest, he could perfectly understand all that the birds said. He heard a thrush say to a magpie, How stupid men are! They cannot understand the simplest thing. It is now quite a year since the maiden was transformed into a water lily and thought she sings so sadly that anyone going over the breeze must hear her. Yet no one comes to her aid. 
how far my bridegroom rode over a furious arrow and heard her singing, but was no wiser than the rest. And he is to blame for all her misfortunes, added the magpie. If he hears only the words of me, she will remain a flower forever. She was soon delivered by the matter only laid before the old wizard of Finland. After hearing this, the prince wondered how he could get a message conveyed to Finland. He heard one swallow say to another, Come, let us fly to Finland. We can build better nets there. Stop, kind friends, cried the prince. Will you do something for me? The birds consented, and he said, Take a thousand greetings from me to the wizard of Finland, and ask him how I may restore a maiden transformed into a flower to her own form. The swallows flew away, and the prince rode on to the breeze. There he waited, hoping to hear the song. But he heard nothing but the rushing of the water and the moaning of the wind, and disappointed, he rode home. Shortly after, he was sitting in the garden, thinking that the swallows must have forgotten his message. When he saw an eagle flying above him, the bird gradually descended until it perched on a tree close to the prince and said, the wizard of Finland greets thee and bids me say that thou makest free the maiden thus. Go to the river and smear thyself all over with mud. Then say, from a man into a crab, and thou wilt become a crab. Plunge boldly into the water, swim as close as the plants to the water lilies roots and loosen them from the mud and weeds. This done, fasten thy clothes into the roots and rise with them to the surface. Let the water flow all over the flower and lift with the current until thou comes to a mountain ash tree on the left bank. There is near it a larger stone. Stop there and say, from a crab into a man, from a water lily into a maiden, and ye both will be restored to your own forms. Full of doubt and fear, the prince let some time pass before he was bold enough to attempt to rescue the maiden. Then a crow said to him, why doesn't he hesitate? The old wizard has not told three wrong, neither have the birds deceived there. Hasten and dry the maiden's tears. Nothing worse than death can befall me, thought the prince, and death is better than endless sorrow. So he mounted his horse and went to the breeze. There he again heard the water lady's lament and hesitating no longer, smeared himself all over with mud and sank from a man into a crab, plunged into the river. For one moment the water hitched in his ears and then all was silent. He swam up to the plant and began to loosen its roots. But so firmly were they fixed in the mud and reeds that it, this took him a long time. He then grabbed them and rose to the surface, letting the water flow over the flower. The current carried them down the stream, but now where could he see the mountain ash? At last he saw it and closed by the large stone. Here he stopped and said, From a crab into a man, from a water lily into a maiden and to his delight found himself once more a prince and the maiden was by his side. She was ten times more beautiful than before, and wore a magnificent pink yellow robe sparkling with jewels. She thanked him for having freed her from the cruel witch's power, and willingly consented to marry him. But when they came to the bridge where he had left his horse, it was now hard to be seen. For though the prince thought he had been a crab only a few hours, 
he had in reality been under the water for more than 10 days. While they were wondering how they should reach his father's boat, they saw a splendid coach driving by six gaily horses coming along the bank. In this, they drove to the palace. The king and queen were at church weeping for their son, whom they had long mourned for dead. Great was their delight and astonishment when the prince entered, leading the beautiful maiden by the hand. The wedding was at once celebrated and there was feasting and merrymaking throughout the kingdom for six weeks. But after some time afterward, the prince and his bride were sitting in the garden, when a crow said to them, Ungrateful creatures, have you forgotten the two poor maidens who helped you in your distress? Must they spin gold flags forever? Have no pity on the old witch. The three maidens are princesses, whom she stole away when they were children together, with all the silver utensils which she turned into gold flags. Poison were her fittest punishment. The prince was ashamed of having forgotten his promise and set out at once. And by great good fortune reached the heart when the old woman was away. The maidens had dreamed that he was coming and were ready to go with him. But first they made a cake in which they put poison and left it on a table for the old woman was likely to see it when she returned. She did see it and thought it looked so tempting that she greedily ate it up and at once died. In the secret chamber were found fifty wagon loads of gold flags, and as much more was discovered buried. The heart was raised to the ground, and the prince and his bride and her two sisters lived happily ever after. So this story has a very uh, amazing and interesting ending and most importantly it was a happy ending that I like the most. So how was the painting and the story today? How you enjoyed? Please let me know in my comment section because I am eagerly waiting for the review for the comments and they are young your comments are really precious and I really appreciate you guys when you comment me something. I feel very energetic, I feel inspired by your comments and suggestions. And if you forgot to subscribe my channel by listening to the story and the painting, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the red bell icon to get notified whenever I release a brand new video and a new drawing just for you and one more thing if you have any request or any suggestions regarding me or my channel please feel free to write in the comment section because i really appreciate your comments and i am a beginner in case of acrylic paintings and i have a lot of um, friends that who are used and they are amazing they make masterpieces in acrylic painting so if you guys inspires me it's meant a lot